John Montague loved to gamble. So much so, he didn't want to leave the gambling table. He told his cook he wanted some food he could eat with one hand so he could keep the other hand free for the game. His cook came back with some meat between two pieces of toast. It was then, in 1762, John Montague, the Earl of Sandwich, invented his namesake, The Sandwich. On today's menu, we gamble on three classic sandwiches, gourmet grilled cheese, BLT, and grilled chicken with brie. I'm Garrett Shack, and today, that's what we're cooking on the coast. Today we're cooking three of my favorite sandwiches. Kicking it off is the BLT, then the gourmet grilled cheese sandwich, and finally a grilled chicken and brie sandwich that'll knock your socks off. Let's get started. So I've got a pan here, nice and hot, start cooking some bacon. One of the most amazing sounds and tastes in the entire world. There you go. Get that in, start rendering out the fat, make it nice and crispy so that when it gets into our sandwich, it adds a little bit of crunch. So, BLT, it's not gonna be just any plain old BLT. Yes, we're doing comfort foods, and grilled cheese is at the top of like several comfort food lists around the world, but we wanna kick these up a notch and give them a bit of a, bit of a cooking on the coast flair, if you will. Got some avocado here. Just gonna open this guy up. I'm just gonna use about a quarter of an avocado here. Get that into our bowl in front of us. We wanna smush it up nicely. And then we're gonna add some mayonnaise to this. Now, if you've been watching the show, you've seen me make mayonnaise before. I always recommend making your own mayonnaise if you can, simply because you know what goes in it, right? Uh, but if you don't have it, don't sweat it. Go ahead and use, uh, use some store-bought mayonnaise. So a nice tablespoon for, that quarter, uh, for that, that quarter avocado that we threw in there. Again, mixing it nicely. Some fresh cracked pepper. Fair bit of fresh cracked pepper. We're also gonna add some of this pepper to our bacon as well. So into the pan, we're gonna crack the pepper on there. Pepper is gonna add a nice little bit of heat to our sandwich. And bacon and pepper go hand in hand. There we go. Some salt, just a bit, depending on uh, which mayonnaise you're using. And then we wanna cut up a bit of lime juice. The lime's gonna cut some of that fat that's in there with the mayonnaise and the avocado. Okay, give it a good squeeze. There we go. It's gonna add a nice zip to our sandwich as well. There you go, I told you, we're not just making plain old BLT sandwich here. Okay, that looks great. Give it a little taste. Mmm, yummy. Oh, so delicious. That's perfect. Let's have a look at our bacon, maybe give it a flip around here. It's okay if it tears up a little bit, it's going in the middle of a sandwich, that's, uh, so that's just fine. Now let's turn our attention to the bread. So today, we're doing our BLT. I mean, BLTs can be made on any number of sandwich loaves, whatever you like. But today we're actually gonna put it inside a, what's called a torpedo roll. So we got these lovely fresh buns here. The bread in sandwiches is so important. I mean, all the components are, are have to be amazing to make a really good sandwich, but the bread really plays a key role. This is a nice crusty bread on the outside and you'll see when we crack it open. It'll be nice and soft on, on the inside. So get this bread. Oh, it smells incredible. Get this bread from your favorite bakery. Buy it fresh. Make sure it just makes such a world, world of difference on your sandwiches. And we're going to put a good helping of the mayonnaise in there. See nice chunks of avocado. Looks fantastic. Both sides. Mayonnaise is key as well here. Key as well. You know that uh, by the time you graduate uh, from high school, most North Americans will have consumed 1,500 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Unreal. I thought about doing PB&J on the show for you, but uh, I thought that might be kind of boring. So, you know, we'll, we'll kick it up here with these, with these BLTs. All right, bacon's looking great. Turn our attention back to the sandwich, BLT, the lettuce portion. So bacon, lettuce, tomato. I'm using arugula. Once again, we're looking for a little bit of peppery taste in there and arugula, or rocket as it's known, gives this amazing peppery flavor. Put a fair bit in there. 
And then tomatoes. A lovely fresh beefsteak tomato. Look at that guy. Oh, it smells amazing. It smells so good. We'll just cut the end off here. There we are, and I'm going to make fairly thick slices here. I mean, these are gourmet sandwiches after all, right? Okay, plunk that right in there. Perfect. I'm going to season with a little more salt because tomatoes love pepper too. Give it some pepper. Building layers in our sandwiches here. Now, our bacon should be just about ready to go in there. And it is. Look at that. Very nice. Now, using my cloth here, I'm just going to take the bacon, just dab it off ever so slightly. Take the pan off the heat for a quick second. But don't get rid of that pan. We're going to cook our chicken in there in just a second. We're going to turn this bacon right over here to the sandwich. Oh, man. Oh, it's going to be hard not to eat this before the end of the show. I'll tell you that right now. now. Let's close it all up. Squish it, kind of squish it in there. Oh, yeah, babe. Look at that. See the lovely lettuce? BLT sandwich right there. Set that aside. Start working on our next sandwich. So, two things we have to do here. We have to season our chicken breast. We're going to get that cooking right in that same pan that our bacon was because the bacon fat makes everything taste good. So we'll season this guy up. And why waste it, right? And then we'll go right into our pan. There we go. You notice I've butterflied that chicken breast. So that's just to help it cook a little bit quicker and, uh, and give it a little more even cooking so that the whole thing cooks nicely without overcooking little bits and pieces. There we are, we'll finish seasoning that side. Okay, and now, just before we head to break, because it's getting close, we want to cut and get our grilled cheese sandwich ready. Once again, grilled cheese at the top of, you know, it's way up there with, uh, with things like macaroni and cheese and so on. Grilled cheese sandwich, top of the comfort food list, and one of my favorite sandwiches. And always goes over well at home too. I'm using a delicious sourdough bread. Oh, you can smell the starter in this. So the starter, Bakeries will, you know, use these starters, uh, which is basically like a fermentation of the yeast. And it kind of creates its very own uh, sort of living organism that you feed. And, you know, restaurants have had them, uh, bakeries have had them in their bakeries for, I don't know, in, in, their, in their refrigerators for years. Uh, and they just keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. It's really incredible. Now, I've got some garlic butter that I've pre-made here. Now, it's very simple, just garlic and butter in there. I need a spoon. There you go. I'm just going to spread each side nicely, fairly, fairly heartily. We don't want to skimp out on it. There we go. And you see I've cut nice thick slices, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you why, because we got a whole bunch of cheese to go in the middle of these guys, and that's going to make it taste great. Now, of course, when you're making a grilled cheese sandwich, you don't need me to tell you that you butter the outside of the grilled cheese, right? Uh, not the inside. So let's give our chicken a flip here, because I can see it's cooking away. Voila, perfect, coming along nicely. Turn our grilled cheese over and start adding our, uh, our cheeses in the middle here. I've got a, a stinky sort of Swiss high alpine style cheese to go in there. I've got a pepper aged cheddar. You can see it's kind of crumbly, but that's great. At this stage, I want to add a few fresh herbs. It's gourmet grilled cheese, right? So some fresh herbs right in the middle there. By putting that in the middle and now adding another layer of cheese, Thick slices of a sun-dried tomato and basil Havarti. Squish it down kind of and put our lid on the other side. Now we'll be back later in the show to finish off our sangies. After the break, we're off to do a little exploring of our own. You'll want to stick around for that. promise we're out of the studio but not out of the kitchen we're at Wildwood Outdoor Living Center with Gord Nickel in the most fabulous outdoor kitchen I've probably <laughs> laid my eyes on Gord how are you buddy good Garrett how are you thanks so much for letting me use your kitchen out oh, here today Oh, I'm looking forward to this uh, we're doing a veal chop today I've got a milk fed veal chop here doesn't that look spectacular it does see Fat, how sort of thick it's got nice thick it's about a 12 ounce piece 
big bone in the center there, nice little fat cap on it. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is show everybody yep. how to get those nice grill marks on this steak. So a little bit of oil. What kind of oil is that? We're just using a vegetable oil here. Yeah. Want something that has a nice high smoking point that isn't going to burn. Okay. Some salt. I'm using some coarse salt here. And then lots of fresh cracked pepper, of course, and this is where you mm -hmm. kind of sit back and relax. Your muscles going. <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's it. Then we want to just throw that on a nice hot grill. Find the hottest spot you can. And you want to hear that sort of sizzle there, right? Just nice. like that. So when again, you put the oil on, sorry, when you put okay. the oil on, did you have to do something to the grill before you stuck the well, meat on yeah, it? Yeah, 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 you're right. Well? That's, that's an excellent point. You definitely want to make sure that your grill is nicely scrubbed. Right. Um, I don't put any oil on the grill itself. Oh, okay. It just ends up burning off, right? right? So some people use the spray can, but then it flames up. Yeah. Or you, <laughs> I've done right? that before. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> which, is, which is fine, but it, in my opinion, it's just sort of, sort of kind of wasteful, right? Um, we want to season the other side. It's already got a little bit on there, but I'm going to get some more. You definitely want to put lots of salt on there because it's a nice thick steak, right? Perfect. Now, to go with this, uh, this awesome veal chop, we want some really nice flavors. Veal and balsamic go really well together. Oh, veal okay. and onions go really well right. together. I've got a little bit of grilled corn and some onions here. Can you fire that into this bowl here for me? Absolutely. And that'll be your mixing this spoon there. Yep. Excellent. And then I'll get you to tear this basil. And right. I see you got some nice fresh yeah, basil I'm there too. Yeah, I'm gonna grab some of that stuff, I think. Perfect. Ooh, I can smell the basil. This is That's uh, nice, isn't it? No kidding. Thank We're you. really cooking here. This, uh, this guy's hot. Now I'm gonna sneak in here with the grilled corn that we have right off the cob. And I got more on the bench here. Thank goodness for this outdoor living space, hey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah these... not, thanks to that, it's not all over the ground. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> here we go. Well, you need these spaces. I mean, you got the garbage can, you got the, the paper towel holders, you got everything now. You know, you don't yeah, have to it. try to hide it underneath. You're not running and... into the kitchen and then yeah. running back, yeah. <laughs> now I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to turn my steak here, turn the veal chop, but to get these gorgeous grill marks, which I'll show you in just a second, um, you, can, you want to do just sort of like a quarter turn, I guess. And I like to cook my steak on one side first, then on the other. Okay. Some people vary, but you're just going to do that sort of quarter turn, just like oh, that. Oh, okay. And again, just that gentle little touch. We don't want to lean on it and yeah. push it through the grill, right? We just want that gentle little touch. Okay. Now, have we put any dressing in our salad yet? Uh, nothing. I haven't not done yet? anything because I'm, okay. I know well, nothing. Well, why don't, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll leave this part to the professional side. Okay, yeah. Why don't I, uh, I don't want to hurt myself yeah, here. You can continue mixing though, that'd be great. <laughs> And all I have here is a uh, balsamic whiskey vinaigrette. Ooh. So we've got a little bit of maple syrup for some sweetness. We've got balsamic vinegar. I'm using veg oil again, simply because I don't want to add the flavor of the olives in there from olive oil. That looks pretty good. Uh, maple syrup, a little whiskey. More salt. And balsamic, more salt, of course, <laughs> and pepper. There we go. Oh. That's great. Did you get a little taste yet? No, can I? Yeah, absolutely. Let's both, uh, let's both just try a little bit here. Gotta get a bit of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, that's good. Mm. That's really good. I Fresh just eat basil. that. Oh, oh yeah. Why don't you fire that on the plate? And in the meantime, I've got this veal chop here that's been resting. Because it's so thick, it's gonna take, you know, probably 10 to 12 minutes to cook. About six minutes on each side kind of thing. Right. Definitely don't want to go right to the plate after you come off the grill. You want to give it a few moments just to uh, just to rest so it doesn't bleed out when you cut into it. Okay. You all want right. this all on here? Uh, no, that looks pretty good. Actually, you've done a great job there, uh, yeah. Mr. Sous Chef. I know, you can put me out of the job. I don't know. It looks a bit sloppy on my side. <laughs> yeah, there's our veal Great on your side. And then we'll just put a little bit more of this dressing. So we go on top like that. Yeah. And there it is. There's our, uh, there's our our maple whiskey uh, vinaigrette, our, our, our veal chop, our massive veal chop that's oh. fit for a king. And then that salad that you nicely tossed up for me, that's fantastic. So should do I have we, to uh, fight you for this or what? We'll arm wrestle later, Okay. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> should we dig in for a little bit? I think so. Well, I'll let you have the first bite and I'll, uh, oh, and I'll take us out to commercial. How does that sound? All right. Perfect. Well, I'm gonna go for that nice tender part right in here. Yeah, nice. Now, while he's eating away, we're gonna go for a short break. When we come back, we'll be back in the studio. Thanks. Oh, man. Gord, how's that taste? That is amazing. Go ahead. We're back in the kitchen to finish up our sandwiches. We've got the three on the go, right? We've got the BLT that's sitting on the side just waiting to be plated. We've got our grilled cheese that's ready to go into the pan and our chicken's ready to get onto the panini grill. So into the pan with our grilled cheese. We want a nice medium heat. 
little bit of sizzle, that's great, but we definitely don't want to crank this up to high heat. We want that cheese to be melted before it goes black and burns, right? So let's move along to our grilled, uh, grilled chicken and brie sandwich. What we're doing to church it up a little bit, make it taste better, is we're using a Dijon, grainy Dijon mayonnaise that we're flavoring with tarragon. And tarragon and chicken go so well together, you wouldn't believe. So, mayonnaise into, the, mayonnaise into our bowl here. I've got some grainy Dijon, you can see. Seeded mustard it's also called, but it's got a little bit of bite, not quite as much as Dijon, and but got all those lovely seeds in there. Just mix that together a little bit. And then we're gonna add a little punch of color with this green tarragon here. In it goes, just roughly chopped. We want nice big pieces. We really want that sort of anise earthy flavor to come out. Perfect, I'll give it just a splash of salt and of course some pepper. Probably tired of hearing you say that, aren't you? There we go. And now, what are we gonna serve this on? Well, we're doing a panini style, so we've got our panini grill that's warmed up nicely and we're gonna use a naan bread here. Now, not super traditional, right? But uh, this will make a great flatbread panini. So let's start building it. Get our mayonnaise on it. go. I know you're thinking, holy smokes, go easy on the mayonnaise, but this is a sandwich that you could serve, you know, you know, probably, well, in my house it would be just mine, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, anywhere else you could probably serve a couple of people anyway with this sandwich. Tuck that down below. Remember before the break we cooked up that chicken in the bacon fat. This bacon makes it taste delicious. Just put it here on our cutting board. Just slice it up a little bit more so it spreads out a little bit. Go onto our flatbread. Oh, it smells so good. I think it's the bacon. I mean, anything with bacon on it smells delicious. I've got some really big, thick chunks of brie, and then just some roasted red pepper. You could just use fresh red pepper if you wanted, but I like the flavor of the roasted red pepper right in the center. And now let's top it with another piece. But before we do that, let's put a little bit more of our uh, flavored mayonnaise on there. We don't want a dry sandwich. That would be the worst thing ever. Perfect. Now, close it all together and put it in our panini machine. We've preheated it already. Here we go. And now we just let this thing do its work. Okay, let's have a look at our grilled cheese here. Let's see if we can uh, see how we're, how we're coming along for color here. To go, oh, oh, oh man. that just looks like heaven to me. Look at that. I almost, well, I almost want to stop cooking right now and just sit down and eat. That looks fantastic. Et voila, magic, we're back. Now, because this sandwich was such a monster, we actually had time to go out and have another sandwich while we waited for this guy to cook, but you can see now it's all coming together. Look at the cheese oozing out of there, it's starting to get a little bit crispy on the pan. And then the panini machine's been working away over here as well. Let's just crack that open and have a look. Ooh, all the breeze starting to ooze out of there. I can see a little bit of the mayonnaise coming out. It's got a nice golden crust. And let's listen to this here. That's what we're looking for, that nice toasted, toasted sound. So let's start with the panini, get it off the, uh, we'll pop that guy off the grill here. Get it onto our cutting board. Oh, don't lose any of that cheese. Man, I love it. I can smell the tarragon, the brie, the chicken. It's fantastic. Let's cut it and get it onto our plate here for presentation. Oh, nice and crispy. Very nice. Look at that. Doesn't that look spectacular? Piece of that up there. Those crispy cheesy bits are gonna be delicious. Now let's have a look at our grilled cheese. That bad boy looks delicious. Nice and golden brown on the other side too. Oh, spectacular, yeah, absolutely, mouth-watering. These classic sandwiches, man, they're, they're a chef's favorite. If you can go home and make a grilled cheese sandwich after a hard day's work, oh, all that cheese oozing, oh, fantastic. Get that onto our platter as well over here. And let's not forget about our friend, the BLT. We didn't forget about you, little buddy. Let's cut you up. Get you on that sound on that platter too. There we go. Got a delicious pickle over here. I mean, what would a sandwich platter be without a yummy crispy pickle? 
And we just simply serve that up with a nice green salad like this one, a few crispy potato chips, and I'll bet the Earl of Sandwich would love these gourmet sandwiches. We got the gourmet grilled cheese, the classic BLT, and an amazing grilled chicken and brie sandwich. I, for one, can't wait to dig in. Now, where did I put my pants? Now, what better way to savor these sandwiches than with the perfect beverage pairing? With me today from Four Mile Brewing Company is Doug White. How are you, Doug? Uh, good, Garrett. How are you? I am super, bud. Super. Thanks very much for being here today. Oh, great. No you've, problem. You've brought a packet of beers. I see uh, you guys are yeah. brewing a whole bunch up there. So uh, what did you think was going to work best with, uh, with the sandwiches? Today? Well, I thought that the, uh, the golden ale uh, would work great. Uh, it's a lighter beer, and it kind of pairs well with some of the lighter cheeses, lighter meats. And, nice. and, uh, and true to its name, I mean, look at that. It's, uh, it's yeah. definitely golden, isn't it? No question about that. So why don't we see how you, uh, how you made out with the pairings here? I'm going to dig into the chicken and brie here, because I, okay. uh, I think, I think it'll go really well. I think I'm going to try the grilled cheese. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm. Enough cheese in there for you? <laughs> <laughs> Enough chili. Mm. There you go. And the slight hoppiness in that beer just offsets that chili nicely, doesn't it? Perfect. Mm. Yeah. Why don't you tell me, tell, tell me a little bit about uh, some of the other beers you brought here today, Doug? Oh, okay. Uh, this is pretty much our full lineup, and it uh, kind of covers the spectrum. We've got our, uh, you know, our IPA, uh, India IPA, good pale ale, um, our uh, sort of summer uh, wheat ale, which is a little on the lighter side. Got more of a seasonal type, uh, yeah, type beer, yeah? Yeah, summer okay. beer, summer Fair beer, enough, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, we got our, our black IPA as well, which is seasonal, but uh, you know, this time of year. And uh, the tight head, which we, uh, it's uh, a classic British bitter. And uh, this is on cask condition at the, uh, at the pub as well. So oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And that's obviously a rugby reference, isn't it? Uh, it it, it yeah. is, it yeah. is. Uh, we're, um, a lot of members of the family play rugby, and, ah, okay. uh, you know. Good. So everything has a little bit of a story behind it. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah, a lot of stories about, uh, behind just about every one. Well, the pub yeah. definitely has a history, that's for sure, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure does. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. I'm going to have to dig into this grilled cheese next. <laughs> it, looks, it smells amazing.